Today we're going to deep clean the family van. The pinnacle of every family traveling experience, the minivan is ideal for its multiple purposes, as well as its bulky size to hold not just the family, but oftentimes sports equipment, luggage, backpacks. Hey, it's Griff with Simple Green. Today we're going to be cleaning this minivan from top to bottom. Anybody who owns a minivan knows how dirty they can get really quickly. Weird stuff in the cup holders, mysterious stains under the baby seats. Let's get started. As we go a little something like this, hit it! The first step of your deep cleaning process is to clear out the vehicle, removing any trash or debris. Okay, so I usually use two containers. I get one for stuff that's gonna go in the house, and then one for trash and recyclables. You should pick up anything that's not a part of the vehicle, including anything off the floor in the seats, as well as the cup holders and any other area where you might find- We get it. Take out all the trash. Oh, this is disgusting. Oh, don't wash my hands. Maybe gloves would have come in handy there. To prevent grease, crumbs, stains, and odors, and to help retain the resale value of your car, you should never allow children to eat in the vehicle. Cleaning twice a week is really important for families because you'll find that, by all means, <laughs> no need for that. The best way to get all the dirty areas in the car and on the seats is to actually remove the rear seats from the vehicle. That way you'll be able to access all of the areas that would otherwise be hidden or hard to reach. Removing the seats will also allow you to let the seats dry in the sunshine, which will help speed the process along. Now we have a much more open workspace by which to approach our cleaning job. But before you can really assess what kind of problem spots you'll be dealing with when cleaning out your car, you'll need to give the car a good vacuuming to get rid of all the little debris that might be blocking your view, or even masking the stain. Take a brief pass on the mats with your vacuum before you pull them out so you're not making an enormous mess on your driveway when you do. Then pull them out for cleaning and vacuum the exposed area on your car interior. Sometimes I think kids do this on purpose. Now we'll get to vacuuming the entire van to get it ready for a deeper cleaning and to prevent clogging your extractor with chunks of debris. Most shop vacs come with a wide nozzle and they usually come with a narrow nozzle that helps getting down into some of the cracks and crevices inside the car. I also find it helpful to use some of these detailing brushes. You can pick up packs of them pretty cheap online. They help to get down into these harder to reach areas and break up the impacted dirt that otherwise your vacuum cleaner wouldn't be able to pick up all by itself. Since we're doing this detailing here in Southern California, this van has been to the beach a lot and it had a lot of sand ground into the carpet fibers. I find that if you brush the carpet with a stiff nylon brush while you're vacuuming, it helps loosen up that ground in sand and gets the carpet a lot cleaner. Now that the entire van is vacuumed, we can assess the damage and the stains to see what we're really dealing with here. Then we'll get started on the floor mats and seats. Oh yeah! I like to clean the floor mats and seats first so that they have time to dry while I clean the rest of the car. Today we'll be using Simple Green All-Purpose Cleaner to cut through all this dirt and grime. You might reach for a stiff nylon brush for this job, but if you use this, you're gonna need a whole lot of this. Or you could just go online and buy a few drill brush attachments to get it done a whole lot faster. Because I have the floor mats outside the car, I can hit it with a generous amount of water before I add the cleaner. This really helps loosen up some of that ground and dirt before I hit it with the drill brush. You might need to take two or three passes on some of these stains to really get them out. But the extractor is gonna help hydrate and loosen up and pull out all that dirt. It's a good idea if you don't own your own carpet machine with an extractor wand to rent one from the local hardware store. Simple Green All-Purpose Cleaner is perfect for cleaning vehicle interiors because it works great on any washable surface and doesn't have any harsh chemicals that might require gloves or special ventilation. 
For this job, we're going to dilute our simple green concentrate with water at a ratio of one part cleaner to four parts water, or two parts water depending on how tough the cleaning job is. Now that the floor mats are done, let's move on to the seats. We'll give them a good vacuuming to pull up as much dirt as possible before adding any liquid. Then spray down the area with diluted Simple Green without putting too much liquid on the seats. Then we'll lightly scrub the area to agitate or stir up the surface dirt before giving it a once over with our extractor. Our approach to cleaning the seats is a little bit different. We're trying to limit the amount of moisture that we add because the padding and backing of the seats are gonna absorb all of that moisture and hold it in. It'll take longer to dry, plus that moisture can attract stains down the road. So we spray it with the cleaner, hit it with the drill brush, and extract it quickly. Now that we've gotten those good and clean, let's set them aside to dry in the sun and move on to the inside of the car. Now we'll tackle the delicate task of cleaning the headliner. Headliners are very sensitive and you have to be careful with their feelings. I usually spray the product onto my microfiber cloth and then rub it along the headliner, getting any of that dirt and grime out without being too aggressive or using any kind of brush or extractors that will put too much moisture on the roof. Most headliners are made from a pretty thin fabric material, which is glued to a backing. This is why it's not a good idea to use an extractor for headliners. The water from an extractor will destroy the glue on the back of the material, causing it to sag, and it could also warp the backing of the liner. Now that the headliner is complete, let's move on to tackle the plastic surfaces of the car, like the dashboard, the front and center consoles, and the vents. When cleaning the dashboard and the door panels and things like that, I'm pretty aggressive with the all-purpose cleaner. Spraying it on and then I usually clean with these detailing brushes to get into those cracks and crevices and then I have a wet and dry microfiber cloth. Once the cleaner is applied, I go over it once with the wet microfiber cloth and then hit it again with the dry microfiber cloth.
The rear cup holders really were the toughest part of cleaning the plastic in the van. There were several pieces of chewing gum stuck down in there as well as some soda residue and sand and other things. I ended up using the handle of one of my scrub brushes to really help scrape some of that dried on gum. And I brought in the drill brushes to help give me some extra kind of cleaning power. In hindsight, I wish that I had allowed the cleaner to sit just a little bit longer and soak into some of these stains. It would have given it more time to loosen them up and I think it would have saved me a lot of scrubbing time in the long run. Some of the plastic and hard surfaces were hard to get to, especially the center console, which was bolted to the driver's seat. So I removed it and I took a lot of the liners and plastic pieces and cleaned them on the driveway. This gave me more liberty with the cleaner and tools. Now it's time to get to work on the carpet. We'll go ahead and apply our Simple Green all-purpose cleaner solution on the area in sections, then grab our drill brush and get to work tackling all those deep set stains and marks. When cleaning the carpets, we want to use the same approach as the floor mats, but maybe with a little bit less water. So I'm usually using my all-purpose cleaner first and then adding a little bit of water from the extractor. By adding the water to the carpet, it's rehydrating some of those old dried up stains and helping lift it out. Simple Green All-Purpose Cleaner is great at breaking down the sugars, oils, and grime that have dried onto the carpet. Once it's had a few moments to work into the soils, grab the extractor and pull it all up. What happens when you spill any kind of liquid on the carpet in your car if it's not cleaned up right away, it dries underneath the carpet. And then when you add cleaning product or any kind of water to it, it's reconstituting the sugars and any kind of residue that's left over. So even as you clean, you're gonna notice that you'll clean an area and then the carpet will wick up some of that stain that's underneath it and pull it to the surface. So the more water and the more cleaner that you use to rehydrate that stain and pull it out, it's going to clean both under the carpet and on top of it. This is easier to do in your car than it is in your home because you don't have the same kind of padding underneath your carpet that can get over, over soaked or oversaturated. When you get to the edges of the carpet, especially along the sliding doors, you should try to pull up the runner if it's possible so that you can get access to the carpet that goes underneath these plastic pieces. Proceed with caution because usually those plastic covers are protecting the wiring and other sensitive components which could easily be damaged by liquids. I put down a trash bag to protect the wiring and you're gonna wanna put something hard underneath there so that the drill brush has something to push against. And then once it dries, we can put the plastic liner back. Now we're gonna move to the door jams and side paneling where road grime and grease can accumulate to make a real mess, but not before taking care of some real dirty business emptying out this nasty water. Cleaning the door jams was pretty simple. I just sprayed it with the all-purpose cleaner and then wiped it down with a damp microfiber cloth. On the running tracks, I ended up having to use a small bristled brush and to loosen up some of this kind of more caked on dirt. But Simple Green did a really good job of cutting through the kind of oily dirt and road grime that build up in these areas. And then I sucked it all up with the shop vac um, and it came up pretty easy.
Now we'll move to the far back area and the trunk, working into all the little corners, openings, and vents, paying close attention to any emerging spiders or other bugs. <coughs> now that we're done with cleaning, let's put the seats and floor mats back where they belong to finish the job on this van. All right, we did it. We've cleaned this minivan from top to bottom. It has been a long day of cleaning, but I'm super proud of the work that we've done. We've gotten seven pieces of gum out of the cup holders in the back. We got chocolate out of the upholstery. We got some kind of soda spills all in the carpet, but we've been able to restore a little bit of dignity back to this family minivan. What's the worst thing that you've spilled in your car? Baked beans? Coffee? whatever the heck that stuff was in the door panel, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon.